Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to integrate high-performance graphics into your Xamarin Forms applications. Using SkiaSharp, you can write graphics code in C-Sharp that will run on a variety of platforms, including iOS, Android, and the Universal Windows platform. And I'm going to build a graphics application right before your very eyes. My name is Charles Petzold. I am a proud member of the Xamarin documentation team. And I am also the author of the free downloadable book, Creating Mobile Apps with Xamarin Forms, that you can find on the Xamarin website. I have been writing professionally about PCs and programming and APIs since 1984. And back then, a slide like this would have looked like science fiction. In 1984, clouds were white fluffy things, and mobile was a gas station. But this slide pretty accurately represents this new world if we could see the electronic interconnections that surround us. I'm the guy with the phone. Yep, if I don't have my phone with me, I'm probably not wearing pants either. I'm also someone who codes and writes about Xamarin forms, which means I'm constantly switching my mind and my focus among various platforms. My desk these days has a Surface Pro, a MacBook Pro, an iPhone, Android phone, Windows mobile phone, an iPad, an Android tablet. And when a notification comes in, it sounds like noon in a cuckoo clock factory. That's not me exactly, but I have used a watch to measure how many steps I take during the day and to have yet another device keeping me aware of notifications. And yes, I've been there too. Away from my desk, out in the middle of beautiful, serene nature with rolling hills and grassy plains, all the while nervously looking around for a cell phone tower so I can post a photo of this lovely setting on Facebook. We developers have a unique position in this brave new mobile first cloud first world. If we want to address the entire mobile application market, we must deal with three different developmental ecosystems. iOS, Windows, and Android. And we're writing code for each of these, a combination of user interface code and business logic. But each of these platforms is associated with different programming languages, API frameworks, and development environments. For iOS, you're dealing with Objective-C, or perhaps Swift, in Xcode. Windows is C-sharp and .NET in Visual Studio. While Android is Java, in Android Studio. And if you're part of a company that targets all three of these platforms, you're probably dealing with three different programming teams. That's too bad, because while these three platforms might incorporate different user interface paradigms, the underlying business logic is likely to be identical, except that this business logic must be written in three different programming languages. This is the problem that Xamarin solves by allowing you to build applications that use the native APIs of these platforms. Xamarin reduces the Tower of Babel of mobile development to just one great development environment, one great programming language, and one great API framework. These are the only tools you need. So, how does this work? There are two basic approaches to Xamarin cross-platform mobile development. The first is that you can write the front ends of your iOS, UWP, and Android apps in Visual Studio using c -sharp and .NET to access the native APIs of all three platforms. Xamarin provides bindings that expose all the iOS and Android native APIs in versions that incorporate c -sharp and .NET semantics. Then, because you're using c -sharp and .NET for all three platforms, you can easily share the business logic. The alternative is Xamarin Forms, shown at the right, which implements a single user interface that maps to the native UIs of these platforms. This is truly a one-program multi-platform solution, and that's what I'll be using today. One thing about Xamarin Forms, however, is that it's missing a graphics system, and that is also what I'll be addressing today. The coming together of Xamarin and Microsoft has synergistically strengthened the entire scope of mobile development. Not only are there tools to develop your apps in Visual Studio, but also the test cloud to test them on a variety of real devices, and Hockey App to get your app to beta testers for testing, as well as tools to monitor end user usage of your app, track custom events, and receive crash reports. 
But this raises a whole other question. How are you possibly going to learn all this? That's the job of my good friends at Xamarin University, whose team of mobile experts have helped thousands of developers. Whether you've just recently graduated and you're new to com the computer industry, or you're an experienced enterprise team lead, Xamarin University can help you deliver amazing native apps using the greatest of programming languages, C Sharp. Xamarin University subscriptions include live, interactive, mobile development training led by Xamarin experts offered in all time zones, one-to-one -one sessions to get your questions answered fast, you can schedule time with Xamarin experts to review architectures, remove technical roadblocks, get mobile strategy guidance, and more. You also get self-guided learning to essential Xamarin training, where you can earn course credits towards certification at your own pace. Classes include the same content as live versions. There are more than 80 live and on-demand courses broken into eight learning tracks with constantly updated classes, ranging from beginner to expert. Xamarin University includes access to exclusive on-demand videos from industry leaders covering the latest mobile topics and challenges from new platform APIs to testing and deploying on physical devices. Subscription options are flexible, including a new monthly option starting at $83.25 a month or less than $3 a day, offering unlimited access to full course catalog, expert mobile instruction and advice, hands-on help, and more. You also have the opportunity to become a Xamarin Certified Developer. This honor designates the top mobile developers in the industry. It is awarded to those who complete the certification track, do vigorous coursework, and demonstrate practical Xamarin mobile development expertise. So, let's get moving. The subject here is Skia Sharp Graphics for Xamarin Forms. I'll be introducing you to the basics of this graphics programming language in the context of a real application. Keep in mind that you can ask questions anytime during this webinar. Getting started. What we're going to be looking at here is a graphic system called Skia, which is an open source C++ project that Google owns that is used in many Google products. Skia is an immediate mode graphics system. Immediate mode means that when your program calls various graphics drawing functions, the graphics are very quickly rendered on the screen as the functions are being called. The alternative is a retain mode graphics system in which graphical objects are persistent and render themselves when necessary. Immediate mode graphics is the more traditional approach. Skia is also a 2D system and primarily a vector graphics system, which means that it's mostly concerned with lines and curves, but it also supports the rendering of bitmaps and raster operations on those bitmaps. Of course, many of us would much rather be programming in C-sharp rather than C++, and that's the purpose of Skia Sharp, which is Xamarin's wrapper and packaging of the Skia graphics engine. When coding Skia Sharp graphics, you use C-sharp, and it integrates with .NET. For example, later in this presentation, you'll see how to load a bitmap into a program, and you'll use some Skia Sharp for that, but you'll also be using a regular old .NET stream object. You can use Skia Sharp in Windows Forms apps, Windows Presentation Foundation, Universal Windows Platform, as well as Apple platforms, iOS, tvOS, and the Mac, as well as Android. And because the UWP, iOS, and Android are all on this list, that means we can use Skia Sharp in Xamarin Forms applications, which target all three of these platforms. Of course, Skia Sharp itself is open source. It's in a mono repository rather than a Xamarin repository. If you're just interested in adding Skia Sharp to your project, you access the libraries through NuGet, as you'll be seeing shortly. Most of Skia Sharp is exactly the same for whatever platform you use it with. But each platform has a few platform specific items. When you use Skia Sharp with Xamarin Forms, you'll be drawing graphics on either an SK Canvas view or an SKGL view. Notice the word view on the end. These classes derive from the Xamarin Forms view class, so you can use these objects in layout just like a normal Xamarin Forms view. The SK Canvas view and SKGL view classes both define a paint surface event. The paint surface event handler is where you do all your drawing. The event is accompanied by information about the display surface, 
and also provides a surface object from which you get an extremely important canvas object. You can also cause paint surface events to fire and hence generate calls to the paint surface event handler. As you'll see, this is how you do animation. Mostly, use Ski is Sharp to draw to a computer screen, but you can also draw to a bitmap, or the drawing commands can generate a file in the scalable vector graphics format, which is an XML format supported by many browsers. So, let's get started and jump right into Visual Studio. I'm on a PC running Visual Studio 2017, and over at the right is an Android emulator. You can also run this program on an iOS simulator, or a Windows Mobile simulator, or a Windows Mobile device, or the Windows 10 desktop, or anything like that. I've already created a Xamarin Forms project named Clock. You can see at the right in the Solution Explorer the Clock project itself, as well as Android, iOS, and UWP stub projects. Let's add the Skia Sharp libraries. Bring up the NuGet Manager for the solution. Pick the Browse tab. Search for Skia Sharp. And there it is Skia Sharp. Views .forms. Let's add it to all the projects. And that's it. In the Clock project, you can see a main page.xaml file and a main page.xaml.cs code behind file. Let's bring up the code file first and add a couple using directives for Skia Sharp. And then we'll go into the XAML file. And one thing we'll need is an XML namespace declaration for Skia Sharp.view.forms. I want to get rid of this label here, but insert a Skia Sharp canvas view. Give it a name, set the event handler for paint surface, pick the default name, and we are done. You can instantiate an SK canvas view in code or XAML. You can put it in layout with other Xamarin Forms views. You can set a specific size or let it adapt to the size of its container. You can have multiple SK Canvas view objects on the screen. Uh, you can get touch input through them. Let's go back to the code behind file. And there is the paint surface event handler. The paint surface event is fired when the canvas view first becomes visible, and thereafter if the canvas view changes size. For example, if you tilt the phone from portrait to landscape or back. You can also force a paint surface event with an invalidate surface method. That's for animation. The job of the paint surface event handler is to repaint the entire canvas. We are ready to add some code. From the event arguments, get an SK surface object and then an SK canvas. Let's clear to start off with a blank canvas. I'll pick a random color such as cornflower blue. Let's compile to see if it's working. A little time lapse, but there it is, the cornflower blue background. We're off to a good start. Now this SK surface object is of limited use, but SK canvas is one of the most important classes in Skia Sharp. This is what you use to call every drawing function. Let's go back to the slides. Welcome to graphics programming. The canvas is your drawing surface. The SK Canvas class defines all the drawing methods, and I've listed the most common, such as draw circle, draw rect, draw line, draw text, and draw a bitmap. But as you'll see later, Skia supports a thing called a graphics path. So really, for drawing lines and other figures, the only drawing method you need is draw path. Skia also supports graphics transforms that allow you to translate, scale, rotate, or skew your graphics objects. Transforms are sometimes treated as an advanced topic in graphics programming, but they are really so important, so useful, I'm going to introduce transforms very shortly. Now, anytime you draw something like a circle, you need to specify certain attributes, such as color. All those attributes are specified in an object of type 
SK Paint. Now, Skia Sharp is primarily a vector graphics system, which means that graphical objects are defined as a series of lines and curves. The most important property of SK Paint is style, which indicates whether you want to stroke these lines, for example, to outline a circle, or to fill them, for example, to fill the circle with a color. If you're stroking lines, then you can also specify stroke widths and the appearance of ends of lines and how lines are connected. We now know enough to go back to Visual Studio for some actual drawing. I want to create an analog clock. And the first thing I need is a circle for the background of this clock. And I want that background to be black. So let me first define an SK Paint object for a black fill. You can define these SK Paint objects right in the Paint Surface Handler, and that's OK. But if the Paint Surface Handler is called frequently, as this one will be eventually, then you should watch out for creating lots of objects in the handler. If you're going to be reusing SK Paint objects, you can define them as fields outside the handler, and that's what I will do here. And we set the style to fill and the color to black. And that's it. Now let's go to the paint surface handler and draw a black circle. In the draw circle method, we need to specify a center in the form of x and y coordinates and a radius. Skia Sharp draws in units of pixels. X coordinates increase to the right, Y coordinates increase going down. The origin of the coordinate system, the point zero, 00, is the upper left corner of the canvas. Now, it's possible to determine how big the screen is and calculate the coordinates and size this clock should be and use those calculated values in the graphics drawing functions. However, it's usually more convenient to decide at the outset that you prefer to draw the clock in a particular size with particular coordinates. For an analog clock, for example, it's very convenient if the center of the clock is the coordinate 00, zero and the radius of the clock is a fixed size, for instance, 100 units. So let's do that. Center at 00, zero radius of 100 with the black fill paint. Let's compile again. And there it is. Look up and to the left. Uh, we can only see a quarter of it because the center of the circle is sitting at the upper left corner of the canvas, where x equals 0 and y equals 0. Now, obviously, we need to do something. And that something is transforms. Transforms are basically little chunks of math that are applied to all the coordinates before they are displayed. We want to create transforms that move the center of this circle to the center of the screen and make it a bit larger. The first job is to get the width and height of the screen in pixels, and that's available from the event arguments. And then apply to transforms. The first, to move the point 00, zero to the center of the screen, and the second, a scale to enlarge all the coordinates based on a scaling factor using the 200 unit diameter of the circle. Compile again. And now it's more reasonable, uh, maybe too reasonable. Uh, we probably don't want the circle butting up against the sides of the screen. So uh, if that's the case, we could just increase that 200 factor to 210 or something. Uh, but let's leave it for now. One advantage of using transforms is that we can now draw everything else in the clock as if the center of the clock is the point zero, 00 and the radius is 100. Uh, this is a clock, so we need the time. And because we're in a .NET environment, we can use date time. And I want to draw an hour hand, a minute hand, and a second hand. These hands will be white lines against a black background. So let's create another SK Paint object as a field.
Now this style is stroke, we want to draw lines rather than fill an area. The color is white and it has a stroke width and a stroke cap so the ends of the lines are rounded. This stroke width, by the way, is subject to scaling transforms. To make it look nice, I've also set anti-aliasing. Move down to after the black circle is drawn and draw an hour hand. These coordinates draw a line from 0, 0, which is the center of the circle, to 0, minus 50, which is halfway up near the top of the circle. Uh, this is the position of the hour hand for 12 o'clock. We need to rotate the clock hand based on the hour and minute. This is another transform called rotate degrees. Thirty degrees per hour plus another one degree for every two minutes. And now I want to make this hour hand thick, so let me set the stroke width to fix fifteen pixels. You can alter paint objects within the paint surface handler. Now the problem is I also have to draw minute hands and second hands, and they need to be rotated by different angles altogether. And these calls to rotate degrees are cumulative. So I want to save the current state of the canvas, which is, includes all the transforms, before setting the rotation angle, and restore the canvas afterwards. And that's accomplished with SK Canvas methods named Save and Restore. Call Save before you start setting transforms, and Restore after you're done. Now let's do the same thing for a minute hand. Except that the rotation is calculated based on the minute and second, the stroke width is thinner, and the hand is a little longer. And similarly for the second hand. Let's recompile. The good news is that it's the correct time. The bad news is that it's not very attractive. And worse, the hands aren't moving. The time was correct a little while ago, but it's already wrong. Uh, that second problem is actually very easy to solve. All we need to do is make sure that the paint surface event handler is repeatedly executed. To do that, we can use a Xamarin Forms timer and set it right in the constructor of the page class. The timer is fired 60 times a second, which is a typical refresh rate for a video display, and the event handler simply calls invalidate surface. And let's compile again. And now it's an actual clock and you'll note that there is no flickering or anything nasty like that. All the buffering to eliminate flickering is handled behind the scenes and everything is being redrawn 60 times a second. But the clock looks kind of plain as it is. Let's add hour and minute marks around the perimeter, just little dots. To do this, we need another SK Paint object, this one for a white fill. And let's set up a little loop to draw 60 dots. Every 6 degrees, draw a new circle, vary the radius depending upon whether it's an hour or minute, and rotate it by another 6 degrees. By the end of the loop, the 60 rotate degrees calls have accumulated to 360 degrees, so there's no reason to save or restore anything. Compile again. And it's looking better already. 
Have you ever seen one of those clocks that looks like a cat, where the clock is actually in the body of the cat, and there's a head on top and a tail dangling down? Let's make this clock into a cat clock. It shouldn't be too hard. Uh, we can begin with another filled circle for the head. The center is somewhere above the first circle, and the radius is smaller, 75 pixels rather than 100. Compile again. Well, we're obviously going to need some ears and eyes and a tail, but it's also obvious that we need more room for this clock. In other words, we, our scaling factor is too high. Let's go back and fix that by removing the simple division with divided by 200 and replacing it with a calculation based on both the width and height. Compile again. And now there's room for the head and some ears as well and a tail. Uh, these are not simple figures. To learn how to draw these things, we need to go back to the PowerPoint deck. To draw anything other than simple lines and figures, you need an SK path. A path is a collection of contours. Each contour is a series of connected straight lines and curves. Contours can be either open or closed. Closed means that the end of the contour meets up with the beginning. A complete path can then be either stroked to draw the lines or filled to fill all the enclosed areas. Move to begins a new contour. Line to adds a line to it. There are a variety of curves that can be added. Arc to adds a curve on the circumference of an ellipse or circle. And there are a variety of Bezier curves. If you're familiar with scalable vector graphics, or if you know the path markup language in Windows XAML-based environments, you'll be happy to know that SK Path supports that path language, and you'll be seeing an example shortly. Armed with this knowledge, let's head back to Visual Studio. You can create and define paths right in the paint surface event handler. But keep in mind that the event handler is now executing 60 times a second. So you might want to define the paths outside the handler and reuse them. Let's define some fields of type SK path. Paths for the cat's ear, the eye, the pupil inside the eye, and the tail. And let's actually define these paths in the constructor. For the ear, new path, move to, line to, line to, and close. That makes a triangle, just three points. The cat's eye is a little more complex. This involves a couple of arcs. The arcs are rather complicated because they can be drawn in a variety of ways, but the eye is just two connected arcs, so it's not too bad. The pupil of the eye is similar. These coordinates are relative to the eye itself. And finally, a simple Bezier curve for the tail. Four points. We're going to need more paint objects. The cat's eye has to be green, of course. And the tail needs to be black. We already have an SK Paint object for a black fill, but now we also need a black stroke.
The coordinates of the ears and the eyes are relative to a coordinate of 0, 0. So we know we're going to need a transform to move them into place relative to the cat's head. And as we know, cats usually have two ears and two eyes. So we might take advantage of this symmetry by using a transform to flip them around the vertical axis. Let's begin with a simple loop that loops twice for the two sides of the cat's head. When i equals 0, then the scale transform has an x-coordinate of minus 1, so it flips everything around the vertical axis. Then when i equals 1, the scale transform is normal. Let's draw the ear with a nested save and restore so it's in the correct position. And similarly for the eyes. And while we're at it, let's add some whiskers. Whiskers are simply white lines. And we'll add four of them. A cat has only one tail, fortunately. So that can be added outside the loop. And just simply draw the path with the black stroke. There's a lot of new stuff here. I think we deserve a recompile. OK, this is starting to look good. But the hands of the clock themselves are still rather ugly. Uh, they blend too much into each other, so it's hard to distinguish them when they overlap. Uh, one way to draw something so it stands out from something that's similar is to draw it with both a stroke and a fill to give it an interior color and a different stroke color. And I think these hands should have a white outline with a gray interior. And that means we need another paint object. Just another fill. This time, it's gray. And I'm going to define the hour hand and the minute hand with a path that includes some Bezier curves. But instead of doing it in code, I'm going to do it in scalable vector graphic style. These strings are one letter commands and coordinates. M means move, C is a cubic Bezier spline, L is a line, Z closes the path at the end. And now we need to replace the code that we already have for these two hands. Here's the hour hand. Uh, we no longer need to set the stroke width or draw the line. Instead, we draw the path first with a gray fill and then again with a white stroke. Similarly for the minute hand. And since the white stroke paint has a stroke width of 2, I no longer need this statement, which sets it back to 2 for the second hand. Let's see what it looks like now. Nice. 
Much better. Curvy, old-fashioned clock hands. Let's see if there's anything else in the PowerPoint slides that might help us pretty this up even more. We've been dealing with solid colors, but Skia also supports what they call shaders, which encompasses a collection of gradients, uh, some random noise, tiled bitmaps, and it's also possible to combine these things. For fancy strokes, there are path effects. The dash can create a custom series of dots and dashes, but the next two can actually create a row or an array of little path objects. So you can draw a line composed of little stars, for example. Let's go back to Visual Studio one last time. I want to replace the cornflower blue background with a tiled bitmap shader. I have a little bitmap of some wood grain uh, somewhere around. Let me add that to the project. Add existing item. Let's go to my pictures. And there's woodgrain.ping. Add it. I made this bitmap by taking a photograph of my floor. Uh, very important. You see the properties for this file down at the bottom here? Set the build action to embedded resource. Otherwise, you won't be able to load it into the program. And let's go back to the code behind file and add a new paint object just for this background. And it's defined as something very simple, just a fill. I need a couple of new using directives in order to load in the bitmap. System.io and system.reflection. And now let's load in the bitmap and create the shader to set to the background fill paint. The code gets the assembly object first, and then a stream object, a .NET stream, and converts that to a Skia Sharp stream for loading in the bitmap, and then creating the shader. All these objects are disposable, so it's a good practice to put them into using statements so they get disposed in an orderly manner. And finally, set the shader property of background fill paint to the shader that we've just created. Now let's replace the original call that cleared the background with cornflower blue with code that paints the background with this paint. There it is. And now we just paint the background. Let's recompile. Ah, looks like it's hanging up on a wall of your cabin. Uh, there's a temptation now once we have the basic clock done, to add some animation. You can make the eyes blink, you can make the tail swing back and forth like a pendulum, stuff like that. Uh, let me give you some advice. If you have temptation to add some animation to this, give in to those temptations. In computer graphics, there is no such thing as too much animation. Go crazy with it. But let me try something a little different. You recall that there was a Bezier path defined in the constructor for this tail. Let me first calculate a value of t for time that moves sinusoidally from minus 1 to 1 every second. And I want to use that to recreate the path that defines the cat's tail so that the individual coordinates of the Bezier spline change with time. One last time, let's compile to see what this looks like. Well, this is not your grandmother's cat clock. Now the tail is flipping back and forth in a rather agitated manner, as if the cat is not entirely happy 
to have a clock embedded in its belly. If you want to plunge deeper into Xamarin Technologies, there's no better path to knowledge than Xamarin University. With Xamarin University, you'll be exposed to self-guided learning where you can go at your own pace, lightning lectures and guest lectures covering the latest technologies, and two, live expert-led introductory courses that count towards your Xamarin Mobile Developer Certification. You can sign up for Xamarin University from the Visual Studio Marketplace, which offers monthly payment options and the ability to use Azure subscriptions. For less than $3 a day, you receive unlimited access to a constantly updated curriculum with everything ranging from topics such as C-sharp for beginners to classes covering the latest in navigation styles and controls for Android and iOS. For more information about Skia Sharp and Skia Sharp for Xamarin Forms, check out the documentation on the Xamarin website. The program I've just built here is available for downloading from the samples gallery of the Xamarin website. It's called Cat Clock. There are also plenty of other Skia Sharp for Xamarin Forms samples. And tune in again at this same time next week on June 22nd for Xamarin University Presents Customizing Xamarin Forms User Interface and on June 29th for the developer's introduction to Azure Machine Learning. Previous webinars are available on Channel 9 at the link at the bottom of the page. Thank you so much. And if you have any more questions, please continue to ask them.